you are ready to wake up, you're going to wake up. And if you're not ready, you're going to stay pretending that you're just a little, poor little me. And uh, since you're all here and engaged in this sort of inquiry, I assume that you're all on the process of waking up. Or else you're teasing yourselves with some kind of uh, flirtation with waking up, which you're not serious about. But I assume yeah, maybe you are not serious but sincere, that you are ready to wake up. So then, when you're in the way of waking up and finding out who you really are, what you do is what the whole universe is doing at the place you call here and now. You are something the whole universe is doing in the same way that a wave is something that the whole ocean is doing. The real you is not a puppet which life pushes around. The real deep down you is the whole universe. Hi everyone, welcome back. In my previous video, I talked about what shadow work is, and I explained the mechanics, and also described what the dark night of the soul is. I also describe about when we start to do shadow work, and we really start to go within and releasing what no longer serves us, we are releasing densities, which by a side effect is raising our vibrations. There are many facets to the ascension journey that we are embarking on now, and two components is raising our vibrations and expanding our consciousness. In today's video, I plan to share with you tools that has not only aided me along my journey, but I still use today to maintain my vibrations and expand my consciousness in a balanced way. The first tool that I want to mention is yoga. Everything that humans do is essentially an expression of who they are. You know, someone writes a song, someone creates a dance, someone paints a picture, all of it is an expression. So in that way, yoga is the opposite because it's, it's not an expression. It's about determining who you are and what you want to be. Today, there is substantial medical and scientific evidence to show that the very fundamentals of your brain, chemistry, and genetic content can be changed by practicing different systems of yoga. Yoga means union. It is a method that allows an individual piece of life to yoke itself to the cosmos. So to be in yoga is a destination, which along the way, the process itself has been called yoga. The process has many names, asanas, sadhanas, 112 basic ways, but millions of tools which have been evolved from these 112 fundamentals, which each of them now has been called yoga. So often in the Western society, we view yoga just in the stretching and the breathing, which are two important facets of one system of yoga. There are many different types of systems of yoga, such as chanting, which focuses mostly on the sound vibrations, others that will focuses solely on the breath, um, others, as we've seen, focuses on twisting of the body, company with the breath. But when the system is taught properly and is practiced properly, aside of the physical benefits, you are aligning your energy centers in such a way that the life force energy is now flowing through you so that your life is experienced with much more grace and ease. The second tool, which is going to be incorporated in all of these tools, is breath. Breath is by far the most powerful, the most alchemizing, and the most simplest. If you think about your life, how often have you put your consciousness, your energy into finding out what does it mean to breathe properly? What techniques of breath are there out there to help change this inner system so that way you can experience life 
with a more grace and ease and a more balanced state of being. Typically, it has been elite athletes or yoga masters or Buddhist monks or individuals who are all about enhancing oneself to be at their optimal level who pay any of their consciousness and their energy and learning on how to breathe properly. Take a moment right now. Close the eyes and just observe. Are you breathing through your nose? Are you breathing through your mouth? Is the breath just in the chest or is it just in the belly? There's no wrong or right. There's just simply observing on how things are. If we're wishing to transmute and change our experience, our perceptions of anything, the first step is to be in awareness of where we are at in the current now moment. Once again, close your eyes and take a moment. I'm going to share with you, I'm going to share with you a practice of breath that I personally do that has traumatically, I'm going to share with you a, I'm going to share with you a breath practice that I personally do that has changed my life. First, it's a breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. And as you breathe, you're going to be inhaling, expanding the diaphragm and the chest, holding at the top, exhaling, decompressing the chest and the diaphragm, holding at the bottom. Inhaling belly, chest, holding for as long as it's comfortable for you. Exhaling chest, belly, holding for as long as it's comfortable for you. And repeating this process for as long as it resonates with you. The next tool that I want to share is, which in my opinion should be coupled with everything that one does, is grounding. Now there are many types of grounding. It's also known as earthing. But essentially what this is, is that your bare foot is touching the earth so that the earth can work in unison with your body as it helps to ground out excess energy. Constantly, we are receiving energies from the cosmos. We are shifting from day to day, being upgraded as long as you're on this incension journey and really shifting from the carbon-based body to a crystalline-based body. And so what grounding does, as I explained in the beginning, is that it really takes the excess energy out from the system and grounds out what you do not need and you keep exactly what it is that you need. For one to go through their day without some type of grounding or earthing practice can lead to experiencing what we would perceive as anxiety or stress or as I just term it as ungroundedness and they, they, they are navigating life like a chicken without their head. So a grounding practice allows you to calm the self, to center the self, to really stabilize the self and to have that foundation for you now to carry out the day with feeling like you're secure. It's really such a simple and a profound practice that if you spend just 15 minutes a day can make the world of differences. If you think about how society is today, so often we have rubber on the bottom of our shoes, which cuts off the connection of electricity and this grounding process to take place. So taking off the shoes for this 15 minutes being out in nature, whether that's the sand, the, the ocean, the river, as long as you're connecting with the earth in some way or some form, you are successfully grounding and earthing. The next tool that I want to share is qi gong. Now qi is a Chinese word for a prana or life force energy. And to practice qi gong is essentially 
to strengthen the chi within, which we all have. It doesn't matter if you believe in this type of stuff. Life force energy is everywhere. So to practice qigong is for you to harness this energy, to be conscious of this energy. And when you get past learning the physical tools of the certain practice of qigong that you start to embark on, you get into this flow state where you have this unifying experience and you really start to feel this energy and you're just passing it around. And then when you get further along the, the journey, depending on the types of practice that you're going to do, you can start to place this energy in your dantian or your lower dantian. You can start to really do powerful and amazing things with energy. This is also to be said with Tai Chi. I started off with Tai Chi, but personally for me, I was in more resonance with Qigong. And it's not to say one is better than the other. It's just about finding what resonates with you and what doesn't and simply throwing out what doesn't. And the last tool that I wish to share with you guys in this video is meditation. When we think about meditation, we think about closing our eyes and going into the lotus position. Although that is a powerful type of meditation, which I highly recommend because when you close your eyes and you shut out the external, you are now calming the body down, you are silencing yourself. So now you're able to receive answers and guidance and so much more profound things that can take place during a silent meditation. But as I alluded to in the beginning, that is just one type of meditation. We don't realize that we enter these meditative states all of the time. And the way I would like to describe meditation or having a meditative practice is essentially changing the brainwave states that you're in. For the average person, we are operating and walking around in the beta brainwave state. And when you go into these meditative states with coupled with breath and focus and not spending your energy to your thoughts, you are now changing the brainwave state to alpha, to theta, and each of these brain states, which we enter into upon going into sleep and in our sleep state and upon waking up, have such profound effects. And so whether you're cleaning during the day or you're driving or you're watching TV, you are tapping in to these brainwave states. So finding something that resonates with you, it can be done painting, dancing. This whole process of incension is about having fun, finding what resonates with you, using your discernment does this information uplift you and make you feel great? Or does this information make you feel scared and you feel a fear-based frequency of it? The discernment is coming into the heart space because at that point in time, when that becomes your home base, anything outside of this unconditional loving frequency, you're gonna feel instantly. And for me, discernment is feeling whether or not this is in alignment with who you are which the gateway is through your heart. I hope you guys got a lot out of this and I'm going to leave links down below in the description box to different tools that I have used along the way that I have felt was a credible source of teaching. And please leave any questions or comments down below in the comment section. And until the next now moment, I am sending you guys all Love and blessings. Namaste.